Hey everybody, my name is Anthony. I'm with Developer Relations at R3. I'm going to give you a brief introduction here to the Visual Studio Code Corda extension. This was released a few weeks ago at CordaCon and will greatly increase your productivity when developing Corda apps with the Visual Studio Code IDE. The extension is already available on the marketplace, so if you go to your extension manager from within the IDE and search for Corda, you'll see it here listed and you'll be able to install it right from within the IDE. Once you have the extension installed, to activate it, you just open the root folder of a Corda project. I've opened up the Bootcamp Corda app to demonstrate. After the project is loaded, you're going to see the words Corda project at the bottom left here. This signals that the Corda extension features are now available, and they can be accessed by the command palette. If you search for Corda, you'll see some of the commands that you're familiar with, such as running, cleaning, and building. If you've done Corda app development before, you'll also see deploy nodes and run nodes. Deploy nodes creates the local file structure for the nodes to find in your mock network, and run nodes will bring the nodes up for testing. I've already deployed the nodes, so I'm going to just run them right now. Once all your nodes have spun up, you'll notice that with the Corda extension, all the node shell instances are tabbed and named here at the bottom within the IDE. You can still interact with your nodes through the crash shell, just as you could before. So if I wanted to list all my flows, it would still work as before. However, the best thing about the new Corda extension is that now everything that I could do before through the crash shell, I can now do within the IDE through visual views. Opening up the command palette again, we can launch something like the Corda Show Transaction Explorer. The first thing the Transaction Explorer is going to ask you to do is to choose a node to explore. If you select the drop down box, you'll see a list of all the parties on your network. I'm going to select party A and we can take a closer look. The current node's info is at the top left. Right in the middle of the screen, you'll see all of the vault contents identified by transaction hash and ordered by the most recent first. Next to the transaction hash, you have a number of output states created by that transaction, and you can expand the block to list each of those states and their properties. Just above is a drop-down box that will let you run flows right from the extension view. I'm going to select the token issue flow and show you how this works. As soon as I selected it, I was automatically presented with the necessary arguments and types needed to run the flow, as well as a run flow button. If any of these types is based on something that's derived from a vault content, like a state or reference, um, or a party on the network, it'll auto suggest as you type and show you your available options. I'm going to select for the owner of this token, party B, and issue him 110 tokens. Actually, make it 120. When I click Run Flow, you'll see a status and then a completion message at the bottom right. And you'll notice that a new transaction was just added to the vault contents. And inside is the token that we just issued. This is just a much easier way to quickly execute flows between different nodes on your network. The next thing I wanted to show is the vault query view. It allows filtering of a node's vault contents. Opening the command palette again, I'll select Corda show vault query view. As with the transaction explorer, the first thing we're asked to do is to choose a node to explore. Let's choose party A so that we can see the same transactions and states. Results are shown here on the right. The filters on the left are generated based on what is in the vault and what parties are on your network. So it's completely dynamic. Party A actually has nine transactions in the vault, but we're only seeing five right now. We can expand the rows per page and select a higher number. Selecting any filter automatically updates the result. It's that easy. If I wanted to see just the transactions associated with a token state, 
I can click here on the left bootcamp.tokenState and the results will automatically refresh so that every transaction is now associated with a token state. If you're at this video from my blog post, you can see in that post a code snippet of one of these queries and appreciate how much easier it is with the extension UI. There's no writing code, there's no passing types or instantiating arguments. It just makes it really simple to be able to do things with a click of a mouse. If you haven't seen the blog post, I recommend you check it out. There's a link in the video description. So that's it for now. Give the extension a try and happy core dapping.